Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a really quick walkthrough on an eForm Form 1 application. I've had a few requests uh, to go through the process that I've gone through to get an approved Form 1, and so I thought I'd just uh, do a quick uh, recording. So I'm sure you've seen the other, um, the other videos where someone navigates the site and goes through it. I went ahead and took some screenshots, so I'll be able to do this a little faster, hopefully. So the goal here is to go very quickly so that if you have questions, you can go back and rewatch uh, individual sections at your leisure. So with that in mind, step one, um, I want you to notice this, uh, my forms with some of these shortcuts. All right, the first thing that you're gonna do, or the first thing that I had to do, was navigate to the site and select this register button. It's gonna generate a username. Username's not gonna be optimal, but it is what it is. That username goes, the user ID goes here. The next thing I suggest is when you create your password, which has to have a certain level of complexity, open a notepad, jot that, out, jot that down without any spaces. The reason that's important is you can use keyboard shortcuts now to put that on the clipboard. You're gonna select Control A like alpha, that'll select, Control C like copy, and then when we select the page, we'll go Control V like Victor, and that'll paste that uh, um, passphrase in, or you can right click and choose paste. Regardless, once you get logged in, uh, you'll continue on to the next step. That brings us to a quick disclaimer. I'm not an attorney, nor am I giving legal advice. This is simply a guide to how I have successfully obtained an approved Form 1 in the past. With that in mind, um, on that far left, uh, my forms section that we saw on that initial page, these are my previously approved Form 1s that I have applied for in the past. This line shows an SBR. This was a suppressor. Uh, and then I have my current submitted in process. I currently have two that are being submitted. Now, uh, this control number is really handy. These specific Form 1s I applied for on the same day, uh, just before Christmas. It's currently January 14th, 2021. I'm expecting to hear back any day now. Uh, current turnaround time is about 30 days. The next section I want to talk about, this is the best tip I can give you. There's a save button. Use it. It will create this draft. When you select this draft, we can see my current uh, Form 1 uh, in process. I just select this piece of paper and pencil. It'll take me right back into the form. The first page of the form we're going to work on, I chose application type, trust. I could have chosen individual, but this specific one I wanted to do as a trust. Then I click next. This page has no interaction required. Once I read all of this pertinent information that tells me all of the things that I need to have at the ready for filing as a trust, for example, this ATF form, the 5320.23, or also known as the responsible person uh, questionnaire, I have that saved and I will put it in the in the uh, description with a link to where you can get that form. We're gonna go over how I filled that out as well. Uh, on this, I click next. Now the application, I'm selecting tax paid and this is where I put that internal control number that we saw in the uh, uh, first couple slides. I select next here. This is the applicant. So the applicant in this case is um, my firearms trust. I am a trustee. If I were a settler or a grantor, I may use a different term on my specific paperwork. It shows me as a trustee, so that's what I used here. My trust name goes here, my firearms trust, my legal um, residence or place of uh, my address goes here. I select next. This is that responsible person questionnaire I was referring to. The opportunities for action on this are in place one, I selected ATF form one, the full legal name, and this is of the trust. Um, so I put the trust name here and the address. 3A, I put my name and address. So line two and line 3A have the same address. Line two has the trust name. Line three has my legal name. This is my telephone number, my email address, so that they can get a hold of me if there's a problem. The type of firearm, this is important, they list it as a silencer, so that is what I selected. 4B is the trust name and 
current residents, this is the exact same information that I put in uh, space two. I put my social, my date of birth, my ethnicity, and my race. This is the Clio information. This is the exact same information that I put on the ATF form, uh, form one application that we'll go over in detail. This is basically my sheriff's office, the name of the sheriff, and their mailing address. The, the next page is very similar to a 4473. I filled this out honestly and accurately, interacting with all of these uh, questions. 9A, I selected the country and I typed in my state of birth and my country of birth. I answered the next several questions ending with F2 as an NA or not applicable. 10, I left blank and 11, I selected no. I then signed and dated, and that's all the action that was required on this page. Now, uh, on to the responsible person portion of the form on application. This is where I need that responsible person file. So um, that's where I would upload it. So working left to right, I selected United States citizen. This title actually transferred from the application uh, page. It auto-filled for me. If it doesn't, you may have to put that in, but that's what that title is. First name, my first name goes here. I do have a legal middle name, so I selected full middle name. I, I typed my middle name here, and then I put my last name, my contact information, and then this is where I browsed back to where I'd saved that responsible person form. So I chose to fill that out and then scan it and save it as a PDF and then I also took a passport photo of uh, um, the standard passport photo guidelines with a closed mouth, um, closed mouth smile against a white background. Social security number, I put my actual social security number, no dashes, no spaces. And then this typically has a slider bar. So the next is the rest. So here's the slider bar. We're now to the far right. Here's the social security number. This is my current address information, my date of birth, birth country, birth state, state of residence, sex and race. I do not have a UPIN, so I left that blank. Birth state, I actually need to select that, but the page actually crashed when I was trying to get this screenshot. So uh, pretend that that says the current birth or my actual birth state. All right, on the next page, responsible persons now we're on to the Clio. Now, uh, <clears throat> each page, I would definitely recommend using that save button because then you can quickly uh, recover and take over. So this is where you, I put my local sheriff's agency. I put the sheriff's name, John Doe, Jane Doe, the title sheriff, and the mailing address, including zip code, state, city, and county. I click next. This is where I enter the line item. So I'm gonna select add firearm. This is gonna generate a pop-up. When the pop-up finally uh, completes, the manufacturer name or manufacturer code, I can select form one registration or manufacturer code would be FMI. Either one will get you there. If you click verify manufacturer and this pop-up generates the manufacturer validated successfully, this will autofill and complete. Select OK, select the manufacturer's country, which is the United States, and select Next. Product type, there are many products in this dropdown. I selected Silencer. My understanding of the current regulation is that model is not required. I chose to not put a model number in because the less information that needs to be checked, the faster I may get my approval. I chose caliber of nine millimeter. Uh, I chose the unit of measure as caliber. Now, with that statement of the model, if I did want to put something clever in here and make up my own model number, I could do that and then choose my item description is not in the list, create new item. But if I do that, I'm going to generate paperwork. I'm going to generate, I'm gonna activate a person to have to validate this request. I would rather have it back faster so I choose not to do that if you choose to uh, submit one with your own uh, clever model number then uh, just understand that it might take longer 
the device that I wanted to make had an overall length of 8.25 uh, with a serial number and my stated uh, intent is all legal purposes. I then select next. The only interaction on this page is to hit finish. I do not need uh, to upload any additional documentation, but I do have an opportunity to validate all the information on the right hand side. This is all accurate. I do not need a barrel length um, because it is not a short barrel rifle. It is literally uh, uh, a silencer, so the overall length is sufficient. When I click finish, it's gonna take me back to that line item with now the line item completed. I can see all of that same information is all in this line by line. If I need to edit it, I select the paper and pencil. If I wanna delete it and start over, I can hit that red X. On to the next page. This is where I'm gonna upload my trust. Before I get there though, the responsible person and passport photo, as you recall, those were done on the responsible person page. They're already attached and in the system, so they show up here. I did not need to upload these. To find my trust, I choose file, it opens a browser or a pop-up, and I browse back to the files location on my computer. Once I select it, it writes it right here next to the choose file. I then choose the document type, corporation trust, other legal entity, and I chose to put a description of NFA trust. Once I hit add, it's now a line item down below those others. The NFA trust is where I put the description, the document type was selected by the dropdown, and the file is what I'd selected, showing the file size here if I wanted to validate it. They do have a maximum of three megs, so you may want to ensure that your file is um, of the appropriate size before you get all the way to this point. So next page is the final page. Once we're here, I had to certify to select this uh, checkbox in order to hit pay. The next hurdle that I see people have problems with is browsers have a pop-up blocker. So once I hit pay, then it, you may see, or in my case, I saw a pop-up blocker. So in the upper right-hand corner of my browser, I selected this icon and then I chose always allow pop-ups from the current website and then when I select done it's going to take me right back and show me that pop-up and if it doesn't pop up I could simply hit the pay icon and uh, generate that pop-up again once I've allowed the browser to have pop-ups. So um, this is a clearinghouse for the uh, pay.gov so I entered all my current billing information, my credit card number, correct expiration date, security code, all of that. The last place I see people have trouble is this may clear, but the credit card company may actually decline the payment if they don't recognize it or approve it. So be mindful, you may have to follow up uh, with your actual credit card company. Once I hit continue here, it's gonna take me back to another pop-up, letting me know that I should have just been in a pop-up. So if you didn't see the other pop-up, but you see this one, there's something went wrong and you probably don't have um, the browser allowing that pop-up. So this is a, a last, the last page you're gonna see before you would hit this sign and submit. That's gonna generate one last pop-up that will ask for that passphrase that we should already have on the clipboard that we'll just uh, um, paste in and finish the submittal. Once you hit finish, and I apologize, I don't actually have um, that last page as a, um, as a screenshot because I haven't paid for another um, Form 1 at this time. I may do another one and document like an individual or something like that in the near future. But once you hit submit on that last page, you're going to receive, in my case, I received this email within seconds of that submittal. So it gives me instructions on my cover letter and what to do um, with, so this is this form is actually, let me start over, I apologize. The cover letter, I'm gonna need to print both of these. The cover letter goes with my fingerprint cards. There are instructions, I need two fingerprint cards to mail back to the ATF. This is a copy, a Clio copy of the Form 1 registration that needs to be mailed to the Clio. All right guys, I've got nothing else. That should conclude a pretty decent walkthrough of the Form 1 process. Let me know what you think in the comments. I tried to go fast, I tried to keep it uh, on, on topic and, uh, 
and as efficient as possible. Hit up those comments. Let me know how I can improve or uh, um, tell me what you want to see next. Thanks. Have a good one.